Hi, and welcome to another, another digital book talk from Massanutten Regional Library. Today's book talk is for our middle grade readers. And once again this month, I am focusing on two books from the Virginia Reader's Choice list for the school year 2021-2022, and then a read-alike for each book. So our first book is this one right here, Things Seen From Above by Shelley Pearsall. When sixth grader April Boxler volunteers to spend time on the school playground's buddy bench, she does not expect it to change the way that she sees everything. In fact, the only reason she agreed to do this was to avoid dealing with the changing friendships and the stress of the cafeteria that she's been experiencing. You know, that part where you kind of lose your best friend to somebody else and it's not comfortable to be there anymore. That's what she's trying to get away from. But it's on that bench where April first watches fourth grader Joey Bird, who sometimes lies so still on the wood chip playground covering that he looks like he might be dead. While at other times he walks in what seems to be deliberate patterns. No matter which thing he's doing, Joey spends recess all alone. Thanks to the help of the kind school Janet Terra Mr. Ulysses, April is able to get a bird's eye view of Joey's playground designs that he's made in those wood chips. Um, and she begins to recognize this quiet boy's unique perspective. The buddy bench also turns out to be a place where April gets to make a new friend. Veena, a new student from India who is also part of the buddy bench group. And together, April and Veena try to understand Joey, who would prefer to be left alone um, with his tracings. And as more attention is drawn to Joey's talent, his private world is disrupted, and April learns that actions have consequences. April also begins to consider viewpoints other than her own. As Mr. Ulysses tells her, I came to the conclusion a long time ago that people often see only what they expect to see. If they don't expect much, they don't see much. Most of this story is narrated by April, although there are some chapters titled Joey Bird that give us a glimpse into Joey's mind as well. Things Seen from Above by Shelley Pearsall. Check it out today. So this book, The Losers Club, is what I've chosen as a read-alike for the first book, Things Seen from Above. In The Losers Club, um, well, first of all, The Losers Club is by Andrew Clements, and um, <clears throat> we also have sixth graders here. But did you know that it's actually possible to get into trouble for reading? Now, I don't know that you'll get into trouble for, with me for that, but it's possible to get into trouble for reading. Never thought you'd actually hear a librarian tell you that, did you? Well, Alec, the main character of the Losers Club, is about to find out just how much trouble he can get into for reading. He started sixth grade and he learns that he is not allowed to read in class anymore and that he must stay after school for the extended day program while his parents work. As for reading in class, well, Alex still tries it, and of course he gets into trouble with his teachers, the principal, and his parents. He even learns that his reading during class is putting him in academic danger, which could result in being required to attend summer school. You see, of course, he's not paying enough attention in class because he's reading. At the after-school program, Alec must do homework or join a club not sit and read his book. Uh, so Alec decides to figure a way to make reading an option. He starts a club of his own. He starts the Losers Club. He hopes that this name will keep most people away and thus give him the chance to do what he wants to do, sit and read by himself quietly. But then, uh, well, Kent, Alec's former best friend, turned bully. 
he decides um, maybe he should be included. Alex isn't the only one who wants to be left alone by others. And so this Losers Club is uh, more popular than Alec ever anticipated. Another new student, Nina, joins the club and both Alec and Kent develop a crush on her. That's not gonna end well. Will Alec be forced to attend summer school? Will Nina choose Alec or will she choose Kent or will she choose someone else? You'll have to read the book to find out. Our third book today is Oh Rats by Tor Seidler. This is on the Virginia Reader's Choice List for elementary schools for the 2021-2022 school year. Oh Rats is the story of a squirrel and some rats, a pack of wharf rats to be specific. Phoenix is a lucky squirrel. He was the largest in his litter. He has the most luxurious tail and he can climb the tallest trees of all the squirrels in New Jersey. His luck runs out when he is kidnapped. Kidnapped by a chatty red-tailed hawk named Walter. But Walter doesn't have the best grip and Phoenix being so large, well, Walter drops Phoenix across the river in Manhattan. This turn of events finds Phoenix dealing with hot tar, which burns off his fur. And then he falls into the Hudson River. Facing certain death, he is rescued by Lucy and Beckett, sister and brother, rats. Lucy is inquisitive and Beckett is brainy. So brainy that this rat can read and write. They take pity on Phoenix and soon the community of wharf rats accept him as one of their own. When the rats discover that an odious New York developer named P.J. Weeks is tearing down their home to build tennis courts, they organize themselves into a, into a resistance movement. With his talent at climbing tall things and his unique knowledge of electricity, Phoenix is enlisted to sabotage the electrical grid. The results are surprising, even to Phoenix. And when Walter returns and offers Phoenix a ride back home to New Jersey, Phoenix must choose the life that has the most purpose. The woods in New Jersey or the wharf in New York. Hmm, which life does Phoenix choose? You'll have to read the book to find out. Our fourth book today is The Adventures of Nanny Piggins. Now, I chose this to go as a read-along for Oh Rats. Um, we don't necessarily have rats in this book, but we do have animals who can talk and have adventures. So this is The Adventures of Nanny Piggins by R.A. Spratt. This is the first of three books in the Nanny Piggins series. In this book, we meet Mr. Green and his three children, Derek, Samantha, and Michael. Mr. Green is a widower, which means that his wife is dead. So he's raising his three children with the help of a nanny. Or rather, the nanny is raising the kids as Mr. Green seems to be a man obsessed with his work as a lawyer. He's also rather miserly and a cheapskate so he's very stingy with his money, so stingy that he would rather employ, um, well, instead of paying money for a human to be the nanny for his children, he chooses Nanny Piggins, a former circus pig, because she offers to work for 10 cents per hour. That's how stingy he is. Nanny Piggins is extraordinarily clever, and the children promptly fall in love with her. She lets the kids eat sweets all day and comes up with the most marvelous ideas, like taking a boat to China to get Chinese takeout, turning a business uh, gathering into a dance party, making shopping for school clothes into a contest to see who can spend the least amount of money. Nanny Piggins considers school to be a cruel punishment. 
She outwits the school headmasters, the burglars, and the circus ringmasters, and she leads the children on one hilarious escapade after another. Even when things don't exactly work out as planned, and of course they rarely do work out as planned, the hijinks and hilarity make them excellent adventures. So you need to read the book to learn more about the adventures of Nanny Piggins and Derek and Samantha and Michael. These are our four books for this month. Two books from the Reader's, uh, Virginia Reader's Choice List, two read-alikes. I hope you come in and pick out something you'd enjoy to read today.